The Fantex P400A gave us tentative hope at Computex when we saw its move to a fine mesh front panel, similar to what Cooler Master did with the NR600. The P400A follows up on the original Eclipse P400, but while keeping the base tooling, it massively overhauls the panel design to move away from a closed off, suffocated front and toward a more open mesh. Fantex also avoids the trap that many fall into by eliminating a dust filter entirely, instead relying on the fine mesh as a filter and keeping airflow as open as possible. In today's testing, we'll look at the Fantex P400A RGB for thermals and acoustics, but we'll also test the white panel versus the black panel to see if the paint thickness matters, then we'll throw the original P400 panel on for comparison. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. The Fantex P400's been around for a while now, and we weren't big fans of the original because of, well, the obvious. It's pretty closed off, doesn't really fit what we look for in a case. And uh, it was also at a time when that particular market segment was really crowded. That's not as true now. A lot of the case manufacturers are pushing up higher in price, partly because of tariffs. But at the end of the day, this overhaul, despite being old tooling, is massively changed in a way that it might as well be a new case because this is, I mean, that's pretty significant. Look at, the, look at that change. So the difference is here. We've got three panels. This is the primary focus of our testing. We'll be swapping these on and off throughout the testing. There's technically two versions of this case. And uh, so I guess we have four panels. Actually, one of the versions of the case is the RGB version. That would be this one. I believe Fantex calls it the P400A Digital for the RGB variant. It's $90 MSRP and should be available uh, already. This is not a we're way past release. The $70 variant is the P400A Airflow, as it's been called to us when Fantex asked if we wanted it. That one we're testing separately. We have another review on that. But it's cheaper. It has fewer fans. It drops the RGB LEDs and keeps things a bit simpler, but still has the front panel. So if you wanted to, you could buy the non-RGB variant, supply your own fans, and you still get the mesh panel. And after you supply the fans, you're up to basically $90 anyway. So there's plenty of options here with this one. And the reason we have two of this specific panel out here is because, well, painting one white does, in theory, add some thickness to uh, where you're going to have holes punched through. So we wanted to see, does that actually affect airflow? And the, the TLDR is no, it doesn't. But we'll look at that anyway. Uh, there is a, obviously a massive impact, though, by changing from this panel. This one had a couple of differences from the others, like being solid. <laughs> but also, it's got these tiny mesh filtration strips in the top and bottom. It's got intake in the top and bottom, and that's about it. So that is a difference versus these, which are actually closed off. So instead of taking air in through the bottom uh, or top, Fantex has completely sealed those and the air just comes in through the front, which is ideal ultimately. The case itself hasn't really changed. So the tooling from 2016 or thereabouts is roughly the same. If you saw it before, you already know what it looks like. It's a fairly plain internal structure. You've got a power supply shroud. It's sort of S340 era and all of that shows. Let's start today with going through the build notes that Patrick wrote. The P400 is an extremely basic case of a type that has only gotten more common since we reviewed it the first time more than three years ago. The RGB model costs a bit more than the non-RGB option and empty mounts for hard drive bays are sold separately. But at this point, this is no longer an unusual way to market PC cases and Stockholm Syndrome has started to set in on RGB LEDs. The P400 ARGB technically has ARGB LEDs in the fans and the power button, and is technically called the P400A underscore D for digital. There's also a P400A non-D version that's a bit cheaper, and we'll look at that in a separate video. 
There's approximately 2.5 centimeters between the motherboard tray and the steel panel. And there's two schools of thought on this. The P400A's approach offers a decent amount of clearance across the whole motherboard tray with some built-in Velcro straps for cable management. And then the alternative would be something more like the mesh of IC, which for example, has a narrow but deeper cable management space and which one of these you like will mostly be a matter of user preference. The lack of a cable management bar does mean that the P400A, thankfully, can fit EATX motherboards. Since the motherboard tray is flat all the way to the front of the case, Fantex only claims to support boards up to 272 millimeters wide, but that's due to a lack of mounting holes at the front of the case and conflict with the optional hard drive mounts. If you didn't want to use those hard drive mounts, and a lot of people won't need them, and if you feel like making some small modifications, it would be pretty easy to get this case to fit most of the EATX motherboards. You would have to do some creative cable routing, again, a light modification, but it would allow for wider boards because thankfully, Fantex does not include a cable management bar, which does ultimately restrict the board support. Again, we'll save most coverage of the non-RGB P400A for another piece, but we can reveal that the LED and the non-LED fans are identical in form and close enough in RPM to be considered within manufacturing variants. Rear expansion slots consist of a big hole in the case with normal PCIe slot covers over it. The lack of crossbars to get in the way makes the P400A natively compatible with Fantex vertical GPU mounting kit, which they sent along with the case, but which we haven't bothered testing at present. Construction is of fairly thin steel with a lot of flex and heavily vented sections like the top of the power splice shroud and the top panel, but nothing terrible for a $70 case. Some of the rivets weren't punched in completely flush with the chassis behind the front panel, but nothing was loose. That's about all we have to say on the subject of the chassis itself, the build quality. It's a completely normal enclosure for the price. It hasn't much changed other than the obvious, and we've already reviewed the case once. On to the part that's actually interesting, the front panel. There's been some discussion in the community about whether the white variant of the case has worse airflow than the black variant, since the white case has a thick layer of enamel painted over the panel that appears to potentially reduce the diameter of the ventilation holes. Hole diameter is about one millimeter on each of these. We could fit a 3 64th inch drill bit cleanly into it, uh, which put it about maybe 1.1 millimeters or so. And it's about the same on the black and the white panel. There's slight differences, but also there's slight differences from hole to hole. And there's hundreds, if not thousands of them per panel. So just because of the manufacturing variants anyway, we really can't determine if there's a meaningful difference, but we can test them and that's much easier. A side-by-side -side comparison reveals that the edge of the holes in the black panel are sharp and defined, while the edges of the holes in the white panel are rounded in a way that suggests a thicker layer of paint. Each hole is, again, about a millimeter in diameter, so it's entirely possible that a slightly reduced diameter across thousands of holes, especially more than present here, could measurably decrease airflow, but uh, it doesn't necessarily actually do that in reality. The whole spacing also appears to be very slightly different on the two mesh black panels that we have to work with. The P400A RGB one that we used for these tests matches the white panel exactly, while the non-RGB panel doesn't quite line up due to tighter hole spacing. We'd normally ignore that kind of manufacturing variance completely because it is basically irrelevant. But it's worth mentioning because the community has already been uh, in a bit of a fervor about this and we're considering the kind of differences that a layer of paint might make anyway. So we're kind of already talking about it. We requested the old P400 panel because it's the real benchmark for the P400A for how much better it performs than its sealed off predecessor. We couldn't simply seal off the vent holes in the P400A front panel because the P400, non A, actually has filtered ventilation strips at the top and bottom that aren't present in the P400A. So that air will be directed through the front panel instead of behind the top and bottom of the panel as it was in the older case. The P400A has no filters at all, and we like to see this on cases with fine mesh fronts. Plenty of dust gets caught in the external grill, and adding another layer of filtration behind it only serves to kill airflow and defeat the purpose. See the Thermaltake G21 as an example. The old P400 has bad airflow, and the new front panel design of the P400A is the reason that we chose to review this in the first place. We use the RGB model as the platform for our panel testing, since it has three intake fans situated directly behind the panel, and uh, it's not the P400 and the fan arrangement is different, so the scores with the P400 front panel should be taken as just that. It's the P400A with the P400 front panel, 
it is not the P400 stock configuration. And that gives us a more like for like comparison anyway to test the panel differences. Along with the normal tests and the tests with alternate front panels, we also ran a pass with an added exhaust fan like we usually do. We took one of the nearly identical fans from the non-RGB P400A for a total of four fans. And for this particular case, we validated testing three additional times beyond our norm to ensure accuracy. As always, all fan speeds and all voltages are controlled manually to ensure that each test is without variables imposed by the system wherever possible. We'll start CPU thermals with just the Fantex P400A, then we can move on to comparative results versus other cases. In the P400A RGB, the average CPU temperature in the torture test was 48.2 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient, with a relatively minor reduction down to 44.2 degrees from removing the front panel. We see much larger reductions in temperature when we take off non-mesh front panels, or even some of the more restrictive mesh panels like the Versa J24 shown in a separate review. That's good news for the P400A, as it means it's not hindering the airflow at the top of the case any more than is reasonable. There will always be some hindrance without going full open bench, and a 4 degree swing is one of the best results we've seen from a panel removal test. This is completely normal and shows the fine mesh is doing its job. Putting the white mesh front panel on raised CPU temperature just a little more than 1 degree Celsius, up to 49.4 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient. Although this could indicate some minor restriction of airflow due to paint, it's not enough of a, a, a change to matter from a CPU cooling perspective for one, and it's also close enough to be test variance. The test with the extra exhaust fan was surprisingly within margin of error of the original CPU torture result. We've seen this before. It all depends on the case dynamics, but uh, typically the reason for this is because, as in this instance, the front three intake fans do a good enough job of pushing air through the case. They retain a lot of that pressure because there's no panel suffocating them that they don't need the extra help and uh, be mindful that this will vary based upon the CPU cooler selection as well, stuff like that. The rear exhaust fan does cause idle temperature to marginally increase, and that's because it's pulling the radiative heat off of the GPU backside through the CPU tower cooler. Although it's not a lot of heat, it's still uh, heat that's radiating off the top, and that exhaust fan sucks it through. So putting the original P400 panel on revealed that, yes, mesh panels do work. The CPU averaged 70.9 degrees Celsius over ambient, which is really high comparatively, managing to maintain its frequency for most of the test, but with a brief dip when the chip hit 100 degrees Celsius for actual temperature, that is. We're not here to dunk on the original P400 again, but just pointing out that the P400A is a definite improvement, especially since we're seeing some thermal throttling from the P400 panel. So that's obviously a massive positive change. On to the comparative results next. We have over 200 rows of case testing data in our spreadsheet, but we've narrowed it to this selection for the review. 48.2 degrees over ambient ties the P400A with the Cooler Master H500P mesh at 48.2 degrees and pulls it in the neighborhood of other well-received mesh cases with plenty of stock intake fans, like the old Silverstone PM01 and RL06 models. Performance is also similar to the Cooler Master NR600 with one fan added, which lands at 47.1 degrees. We mentioned this result as the two are similar in price, but more importantly, they're similar in mesh approaches where they take a finer mesh and try to eliminate dust filtration behind the mesh. The stock Meshify C and the Meshify S2 are both significantly warmer at 54.3 degrees and 50.7 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient, respectively thanks to the lower count of intake fans, while the Meshify C with added Noctua fans is back in the same neighborhood of the P400A at 47.3 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient. Our tests of the original P400 predate this bench and these results, but based on the results of the previous torture test, we know the P400A strongly outperforms it. Typical closed front cases like the NDXT H500 and H510 Elite are potential stand-ins for the P400 here, and that they're more than 10 degrees warmer than the P400A and CPU temperature. Back to the P400A only results. The GPU temperature averaged 49.1 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient in the torture test, with even less improvement in the CPU from removing the front panel down to 47.2 degrees Celsius over ambient. The heavy ventilation of the power supply shroud means that the lowermost intake fan isn't completely wasted, and some of the cool air it draws under the shroud can work its way into the body of the case. Power supply shrouds are great for keeping cables hidden, but they often limit the usefulness of fans in the lower quarter of the case to cooling hard drives, as we always orient the power supply so it draws air from under the case. 
The result with the white panel was identical to the baseline result with the black panel, which tips the scale further towards the two panels being effectively the same or minimally within measurement error of any real-world test components that would ever be feasible. You'd have to go synthetic to start really seeing a difference. The extra exhaust fan, or I should say, not to just start seeing a difference, but to start establishing that the difference is not error. <laughs> the extra result uh, from the exhaust fan may have helped the GPU somewhat with an average temperature of 48.3 degrees Celsius, LTT over ambient, but that's still within test variance. And finally, the P400 front panel, again, is vastly worse than any other result we got in this case. Measuring 62 degrees over ambient, it's throttling and hitting the maximum temperature before a hard clock drops on the GPU. So we are dropping frequency here. Again, this is 62 degrees over ambient. So actual temperature is more like 83, 84, which just so happens to be the throttle mark for uh, the 10 series. The tiny vents at the top and bottom of the panel are nothing compared to the full mesh coverage directly in front of the intake fans, and that's why we see this. Onto the comparative chart, GPU temperature is less competitive for the P400A compared to the other cases uh, than the CPU temperature was, but that's mostly thanks to some unconventional cases like the SL600M having exceptionally good GPU cooling. The P400A still ranks alongside the Cooler Master H500 mesh at 48.5 degrees, that's that's the $100 H500 blank mesh, to be clear. And the PMO1 on the chart is also similar, while the stock Meshify S2 at 55.1 degrees Celsius delta T and the Meshify C at 57.8 were a good deal warmer. Again, that's not an inherent flaw of those cases. They just don't have the fans, really, that this one does. You need to buy some to go with them. 49.1 degrees Celsius delta T over M, which is a good GPU temperature for this test. It just can't compare to the cases that have intake fans directly aimed into the GPU cooler and a couple inches away. The standardized fan benchmark is next. This is still fairly new to our test lineup, and it's where we test each case with the same fans at the same speed and the same location. And when we say, like, two of the same fan in the front, we actually make sure this exact same unit is in the top and the bottom each time because it does matter. And this setup is what we consider to be a standard configuration, as in standardized for testing. It's to see how the chassis compare without stock fans as part of the equation. As a reminder, this testing is imperfect in its own ways, but it's useful for comparing similar cases. The imperfections mostly stem from things like something like the O11 XL, where you can't mount them in the same place. But uh, there are others as well, like where you can drag down GPU performance by changing the fan configuration. And we talk about all of this in our standardized fan bench video and article if you want to read about it or watch it. And this was added because of high demand. It is still useful, it's just you need to be aware of those things. So we placed two 140 Noctua fans in the front, intake mounts above the power supply shroud. 140 fans can't be mounted below the level of the shroud anyway. And one 120 in the exhaust slot at the rear of the case. CPU temperature averaged 44.3 degrees, the best result we've attained so far in our much more limited table for this test, ranking a couple degrees below even the 46.9 degrees delta T over ambient fractal mesh of IC. When we started standardized fan testing, we picked the mesh of IC and the BitPhoenix Enso as good and bad cases, in quotes there, that would allow us to see what kind of range we could expect in our results. And now we've already blown past our good example. GPU temperature averaged 51.4 degrees Celsius in the standardized fan test, slightly worse than baseline thanks to the reduced incoming air along the bottom of the case, but still competitive compared to the other standardized fan results. This is an example of where the stock configuration performs better. The Lian Li O11XL did better because we were forced to place the fans directly under the GPU, and the uh, NR600 did slightly better as well, but it had standard fan placement. The NZXC H510 Elite was also within error of the P400A, although it certainly wasn't when NZXC had its stock fans installed. 3D Mark Firestrike gives us another test, this one focused on real-world gaming performance. 3D Mark results are always fairly close to the torture results for GPU, and the P400A is no exception, with an average GPU temperature of 48.6 degrees Celsius over ambient. That's one of the better results we've seen, still keeping pace with the $100 H500 mesh at 49.3 degrees Celsius. It's the H500 blank mesh for the editors, because there's a million of them on the chart. And it's now outscoring the PMO1 at 50.5 degrees Celsius. The stock Meshify C and Meshify S2 scored 60.3 and 57.7 degrees, respectively. The Blender CPU render averaged 37 degrees on the CPU, a couple degrees worse this time than the 35.7 degrees DT H500 mesh and the 36.7 degrees Celsius PMO1, but it's closer to the stock Meshify S2 for once. And it's still 
decidedly on the cooler side of the chart, but in a task that exclusively stresses the CPU. The P400A loses some of its advantage that its good GPU cooling gives it in other tests. The GPU accelerated render averaged 23.2 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient on the GPU, placing the P400A in a chart position much more in line with the other tests. The PM01 and even the half X scored results in this neighborhood. The 25.8 degree result average for the CPU during this test is also relatively low, although the PM01 and RL06 did maintain better temperatures. Acoustic testing is next. At full fan speeds for the Fantex fans, the P400A measured 38.6 dBA, surprisingly quiet for a mesh-fronted case with three 120 fans running at approximately 1300 RPM, separated from the user by a perforated metal screen and nothing else. Getting the case down to our 36 dBA threshold for noise normalized testing only required turning the case fans down to about 75% speed or approximately 900 to 1000 RPM as validated by external measurement tools. Noise normalized results are up now. The speed reduction resulted in a CPU temperature of 50.5 degrees over ambient, impressively close to the baseline temperature. That's handily the best noise normalized result on our limited new chart so far, with the NR600 in second place at 54.7. GPU temperature at 36 dBA averaged 52.3 degrees, again fairly close to the baseline, and again cooler than most of the other normalized cases for noise. The O11 XL did win here, but that's with the Noctua fans added directly below the GPU, the ones from the standardized fan test, because the O11XL doesn't ship with any fans at all, so we had to provide them. Completely stock, the P400A is the best noise normalized performer on the chart so far, and although the chart consists of six other cases, uh, excluding the O11XL, it's doing reasonably, it's just, we do need to get some more cases on here, but you saw the torture results for uh, a wider spread. The P400A RGB, or the P400A underscore D specifically, has an MSRP of $90. It is actually available for $90 from retailers. So that's a nice change from the video card and CPU market. And that's also a price range where many such tempered glass and RGB cases are available. It's really densely populated right now. The Meshify C is an example of one of these cases. You can get that fairly cheap. You have to add some fans to get up to this performance level but it's not like that's hard to do. It doesn't really break the budget either. The Versa J24 is in that price range. The Redline 06, a long-standing mid-tower favorite of ours, it's safe to say. It's been a chart topper for a long time. RL06 TG is up there. Uh, buyers should be aware that this is a pretty basic chassis without any special construction. It's not particularly sturdy. It doesn't have new special innovative features or anything like that it's just got holes in the front of it but that's not a bad thing that's actually that's what we've wanted since the beginning and uh, this has been a long time coming fantex hasn't really been big on the airflow side of things it's been closed panels basically forever as far as the front panel it's a vast improvement over the p400 that we reviewed years ago massive improvement the difference of throttling versus not so dropping frequency and therefore some performance some actual frame rate versus not dropping anything at all and in fact supplying the air throughput required to allow the GPUs in modern day to boost even higher. So that's all good. The other difference is it's pretty simple. There are no extra layers of filtration stuffed into this. There's no dust filter behind it. There's none of this behind the mesh panel. That's by design. They should be like that and they should always be like that because the whole point of a really fine mesh is that it doesn't have a filter. If you do one of these panels with bigger holes, which in theory to some extent might allow for a bit more air to go through, although there, there is a point of equality where you're talking forced pressure versus just breathing through a giant hole in the case. And obviously the only the end result of taking this completely off and not is about four degrees in our testing, so who cares? But if you start looking at making bigger holes in here, the trade-off is that Fantex would have to add a dust filter, and we don't want to see them do that because then the dust filter is going to have holes this size or smaller anyway. So now you're just double stacking them, and the net-net is that if you have a panel on the front with bigger mesh holes in it, panel on the back with smaller mesh holes in it, there's an extremely good chance that those uh, bits of metal that form the mesh will misalign. It's functionally impossible to line them up perfectly in manufacturing every time. And with the misaligned, you end up with, guess what? A piece of metal 
obstructing the hole, and so it doesn't do its job. And so that's the problem we've seen with a lot of cases, like the thermal take G21 is a great example, and it's not the only one, but the one that we talked about the most, where they double or even, in some instances, triple stacked filtration to the extent that it may as well have been a completely solid panel. Uh, so that's the whole point of this ultrafine mesh. It's a new trend. The NR600 from Cooler Master also is going this direction. This isn't quite as fine as that one, uh, but close enough, same idea. So it's an interesting trend. It's one that does well and eliminates the need for a filter. So that's also nice. You just wipe off the front with a rag or something and you're done with your cleaning for the day. In terms of color, don't worry about which one you're buying. We not only tested this through all of our standard testing, but I also had Patrick, uh, much to his chagrin perhaps, validate the results several times to make sure that we were positive they were accurate, built and unbuilt the system in that time, and they were the same. Every time it was the same. So these panels, don't worry, buy whichever one you want in terms of how your system's going to look, and don't worry about the rest. Uh, other stuff, so there's a lot of direct competition for this case. You don't have to buy this one. The Cooler Master H500 blank, not the P, not the mesh, but the blank, has an optional mesh panel. I think that might ship stock these days. And that one performed very well in our testing as well. It's similar in a lot of the tests this went through. Not identical, but close enough that you can pick the one you like more. And the h 500s more got a couple of more modern features, but also it's running 200 millimeter fans. So either those look really cool to you and you like them, or they're going to cause a problem with radiator fitment and you don't like them and you're replacing them anyway, in which case you should just buy this and skip the, uh, the fan purchase. Other cases, uh, RL06, as stated, is one of them. Meshify C is a competitor in this price category with performance that can be made to be uh, comparable. And the NR600 is also worth considering, and you can buy an extra fan with that to make it comparable as well. That'll more or less cover this one. Uh, this is the RGB version. We have another review coming up. As for Fractal's offerings, the reason this performs better than those stock is because the Meshify cases don't have as many fans. Like the Meshify C just doesn't have as many fans, and so obviously it's going to lose that battle until you buy some fans. But we have that result in there too. So ignoring all this stuff, uh, this case is on pretty much the same footing as the others that were just mentioned. You have a lot of really good options. We have really no major issues with this product. It performs pretty well thermally, very well in some instances. And if that's what you're looking for, which is what most of our audience is, then you should feel no remorse in buying it. And if you don't like how it looks, well, there's plenty of other options that do similarly, uh, all mentioned. So $70 one's next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. If you'd like to support this type of content and the massive amount of testing we do, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up something like one of our shirts, like this one, or one of our other designs. We have mod mats there as well, toolkits. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.